I'm starting to worry if there's kind of a jinx to this show because this is like the, the second time in the last few weeks when uh, some bad news has befallen. Uh, well, I mean, this is not terrible news, thank goodness, but uh, one of the guests that we've had on the show, if you remember a, a few weeks back, we were talking to Greg Kinn, the, the 1980s musician and now radio host and author, and he was supposed to be on one episode, and then we had to move it for like two or three weeks because he had a little bit of minor surgery to do. And then we, we're gonna, we were talking to Chris Lemon. Jack Lemon's son, also a performer and an actor, and he was going to be doing his cabaret show at the Metropolitan Room in Manhattan, and that was all set, and then suddenly he had a medical emergency that day and had to postpone for, for two weeks. And so here I am, I'm talking to singer-songwriter P.A. Top Brown, and she's in New York, all excited to be doing this, show, well, in, in Long Island, New York, in, in Huntington. She was going to be doing a gig tonight with Amos Lee at the Paramount Theater, and what happens, the snow that I was talking about that the East Coast is getting is apparently pretty nasty, so nasty that they've they've canceled Pieta Brown's show. So I, I, I'm so sorry, first of all, but I'm very happy that she's still on the phone, in the car, with us, in the neighborhood. Hey, Pieta, when did you find out the thing was canceled? Um, well, last night we just made the call. Um, you know, we're not traveling on the tour bus with those guys, and uh, our, um, our traveling was just seemed like that would be the best call all the way around, and uh, they have a... They have a guy in their band that was up for uh, doing the show with those guys. Um, so we just all decided that was probably the best move to make with the crazy weather coming on. Oh, my God. How bad is it? I mean, you're in New York now. What, what's it like over there? You know, actually, I'm not. We drove out of it. We're, we're oh. heading west. Um, so I, I did hear that it was pretty bad, though. Well, I mean, if you hadn't heard, out here in Colorado, I mean, my, my house was without power for about two and a half days. We had a ton of trees down where, where we are. So it's only fair that New York gets its, its fair share. So, yeah. so where are you driving to? Where's your next actual gig? Um, we're, we're heading back to Iowa, which is where I live. And uh, um, November is um, a not busy road month. So um, I'm looking forward to that, actually. So we just got done off of a really busy last couple months since I put out my new record. And right. The, the record, of course, being Mercury um, from Red House Records. Now, you mentioned Iowa. I didn't realize that that was still your home base because it said, or at least according to, to one of the bios I read of you, that even young before you were performing, you moved constantly when you were a kid. Cause your dad, was it because your dad's a performer? That had something to do with it, but I actually, my um, my parents split up when I was very young, so I um, I moved with my mom a lot, and um, she was a single mom, and uh, that was part of the part of the reason as well. So um, yeah, we just moved around for a lot of different reasons, and um, it ended up suiting my either suiting it or probably shaping it uh, my my rambling ways. Huh. So, in other words, it's not as if you moved so much and now you want to kind of settle down. You you appreciate and are used to the life, the itinerant life of crashing in hotels and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it, it most of the time it's all right with me. Not not every every night, but uh, a lot of times I'm very comfortable with it. Well, let's let's talk a bit about your album, which is if you include an EP in there, I think it's your fourth record already since uh, 2002. It is called Mercury, and in a lot of the promotional materials, you mentioned that the idea for it was came to you in kind of a dream. Please expand. <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't so much the idea for the record, but the, um, the idea for recording it in the South um, was very much influenced by this really strong visual dream that I had uh, one night where I uh, was in the dream, I was kind of driving around down in the south where I spent a lot of my childhood uh, with my mom down in Birmingham, Alabama. And then in the dream, it was this sort of nameless southern place. And uh, I was out there, and I pulled over on the side of the road, and I found this old barn, and I was walking through it. And I thought, oh, yeah, maybe I'll record my record here. And I walked to this old barn, and out in the back of the barn was this 
a guitar player was sitting on some bleachers by this kind of worn out, dusty old baseball diamond looking thing. And uh, mm-hmm. he had a guitar player, he had, excuse me, he had a guitar with him and he pulled it out and it was unlike any real guitar I've ever seen. It was really ancient and uh, kind of strange shape and he handed it to me and he's like, here, play this. And uh, when I woke up from the dream, I, I felt sure that I wanted to record the Huh. Record these songs down south. So yeah, messages and dreams. I like those. Do you, do you remember a lot of your dreams? Because I, I remember almost none of mine. Are are they prescient for you usually? Yeah, I do remember a lot of my dreams. Um, you know, not every day, but I, I definitely. I think maybe because I because I like I like that part of things. Um, I'm I'm open to it, and I do I do tend to remember quite a bit of my dreams. Okay, and um, as far as, uh, well, the chicken and egg uh, question, do, do, do the lyrics come first because they might be stream of consciousness? No, no definitely no. not. Oh. Um, I've, I've, I've hardly ever written a song where I write a bunch of lyrics and then try to put music to it. I did that a couple times, um, maybe early on. I had tried to put some music to some things I had written, and it turned out they weren't really songs, and I sang them about twice. So for me, songs are very different, and um, oftentimes either come all together with the music and the words kind of coming together in spurts, or oftentimes starts with the music or the instrument in hand or a melody, something like that. And um, even though I guess obviously your your parents were estranged, how much influence, if any, would you say has your father's work been and his personality and his, his life been? Oh well, huge. You know, he's my dad, so he's a he's a part of me, and um, I think he's a great artist. I have a lot of respect for him as an artist and um, as a person too. And um, there was a lot of music in my early childhood. Um, we, even though my mom and dad split up when I was really young, we all lived in Iowa till I was um, close to eight years old and so I spent a lot of time you know kind of back and forth and I spent a lot of time down in southeastern Iowa with my dad's side of the family who are all very musical um his grandfather and grandmother Mm -hmm. both played and um we'd have these big family jams so that sound and the sound of my dad singing his songs and playing his guitar you know that's a sound I can conjure up in my head anytime, anywhere, and, and I love that sound. So in that way, you know, he's been an influence on me. And then um, at the same time, I also, as I got older, I spent a lot of time alone because I was my mom's only kid. And so that time alone with the piano and um, kind of moving around and being a bit isolated mm-hmm. also really influenced me. And as far as musical influences go, I mean, people have pointed to everyone from uh, early Lucinda Williams to Nora Jones. I mean, who were you listening to, and whom do you feel has had direct influence, if any, on on your kind of music and songwriting? You know, um, when I was a teenager, I got really deeply into the uh, blues and country blues recordings. Um, I listened to a lot of records. I was also really into Led Zeppelin. Oh, and uh, and um, so the, just the, and I think that because of that, I mean, I I was into them because of that deep blues space that they had, and I was pretty much obsessed, and um, I still listen to that music often. And so I think just from a both a musical and a writing songwriting place, uh, the blues has been just kind of king or queen, <laughs> and um, and then. You know, as far as individual artists, there's so many great songwriters, and I love so many of them, um, and singers. I've, I've been very influenced by singers like Ann Morrison and Nina. Mm. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, Pieta, did we lose you? Are you there? Pieta? Ah, ah. Yeah, she did warn me that, that, that in about uh, 10 minutes would be about all that we would have had with her. I'm hoping she might call back just to get another minute or two. But she's on the road. She's driving. She's <laughs> she's heading out of New York City away from the same kind of snowstorm that we had just this past week. I kind of wish we had a little bit more time with her. But oh, 
Let's see. UNC Radio, is this Pieta? Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for calling back. I know you have to, to yes. go in a couple of minutes, but... Um, That's okay. Yes, I was out of range there for a minute. Anyways, I was talking about um, just my influences, and I, I think I was saying, um, you know, as far as songwriters go, the more I've learned about music and songs and the more I've really opened up my ears to hear different styles and forms, you know, I think uh, songwriters like Neil Young and mm. Bob Dylan and all the greats, um, and then I love, um, you know, Ashford and Simpson. I mean, how great are they, you know? Huh. So I think um, there's, you know, I'm just, I'm open, and, and I, I love songs, and I, I don't really care about the style but or, you, or, you know, what, whatever anybody wants to call it. I just, I love the, the form of a song, whatever kind of form it's taking. And I love songs without words as much as I love songs with words, you know, so... Well, but uh, what I am curious about is on Mercury and, and I guess on your earlier records, you are staying within the folk blues idiom. And I'm wondering, is there a point when you're going to bust out of that and you need to do your rock record or your pop record? Or, or is this really the, the place that you are comfortable and re will remain comfortable? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that question. I mean, I feel like on some of my other recordings, and uh, even on this one, some people say, you know, that uh, Blue Rider is a pop rock format. You know, I've heard it all. And so I really just try to stay true to the songs and sing Pieta Brown songs. And I love rock and roll music. And sometimes I play electric guitar loud. Like uh, there's a track on a uh, record I made called Remember the Sun um, called Sonic Boom. You know, we were all playing full on really loud and uh, so I'm not really interested necessarily in making like a rock record or a blues record I just try to stay true to the songs that are coming to me and, and offer them up in a way that seems righteous Now one of the cool things that you get to do by performing everywhere and putting out this kind of music is to play and sing with some extraordinary and amazing people. So I would just love to hear any memories or anecdotes of these people who have been listed next to you, including Richard Thompson, John Prine, Nico Case, Annie DeFranco, J.J. Kale, uh, any memories of, of these people? Um, well, one, uh, one story that ended up uh, kind of leading me to the song was uh, when we opened up those few shows for J.J. Kale, which was an honor because uh, he doesn't tour very much. So that was a thrill for me because he's also been a big influence on me as far as songwriting and, and you know, just musically. Uh, um, mm -hmm. And so we opened a, some shows up for him out in California, and uh, we were at a little shop called McCabe's Guitar Shop, and uh, we did two nights there, and one of the nights that we were there, Tom Petty and Mike Campbell just happened to be sitting in, and their room holds about 150 people. Whoa. So that was really fun, just to hear the music, and then uh, after my set and before their set, uh, I looked down the looked down the hall, and at the hallway upstairs, kind of backstage, and I looked down the down the hall and there was uh, Tom Petty was leaning up against one wall and J.J. Kale was leaning up against another wall. I went in my little dressing room and I wrote a song called Faller that was on my last record called The One and All, name of the record. But, um, you know, music's cool that way. It leads you to so many, uh, so many interesting places and some of them are, you know, all about the music and some of them aren't, but that, that's definitely a good memory I have of some of the yeah. people I've gotten to, gotten and, to you know, be out on the road with. And and did you get any advice from people like uh, Richard Thompson and John Pry and seasoned performers like that? Did they ever tell you, uh, give you any kind no. of No? <laughs> really? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, you got, you got to find it on your own. Well, well, what have you learned in the past almost decade that you've been doing music that you didn't know when you were starting out in the early 2000s? Um, I, I, I don't, you know, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, you know, not, not something I can sum up very easily in one sentence. Sure. But one thing 
one thing that I feel really good about is that from the beginning I've really stayed true to, to the music and to who I am and I'm really not you know that's something that most artists if you listen to uh, what they have to say or you listen to their music or you read interviews with them you know most people that are really deeply into it they say you know just be yourself and uh, stay true to whatever your muse is and that's what's going to guide you and that's really what I tried to do and it's I'm really happy about that because uh, you know it's easy to get lost out there and there's so much uh, hype and so much media all the time um, coming at you so there's lots of different messages you're getting but um, I think just you know the music is awesome and I'm totally into it and I've learned that along the way I can't get enough of the music. Well, that's that's wonderful. It's unfortunate that people won't be getting uh, music from you tonight in Long Island. If, if you haven't heard, the, the show's been canceled because of the weather, and, and, and that's rightful. You should stay off the roads if you're out there in, in Huntington. Hopefully you'll, you'll come back and be able to do the gig. Certainly you can hear Pieta Brown's music um, by going to her website, pietabrown.com. Her MySpace page has songs you can listen to. You also, um, th there's a song that you dedicated, or uh, you didn't dedicate it, but you um, are sort of letting people have it for free for the Occupy Wall Street thing. How, how is that working? You know, I, I actually haven't, I haven't gotten a real sense of, of what, you know, what kind of feedback um, that is getting. I've been out on the road, so I, you know, I've definitely heard some things just from fans, but I haven't really gotten a real sense of, you know, how many people are downloading that song or anything. But I feel really good about it and um, hope, hope I can connect in even more as, as things move along there. But in and other I just want to yeah. just clarify really quick, too. Sure. I, I don't think Amos's show is canceled. We just all decided that it would be, you know, oh. that they were going to go ahead and try to do the show, and I'm, I'm not going to be opening the show. But oh. I just want to... Sorry, yeah. If anybody's listening and wants to go to Amos' show, as far as I know, unless the weather gets even worse, I think it's still on. Uh, I didn't, thank you. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, last couple of very quick questions. I know you have to run, but Pieta Brown, unusual name. Is it based on the painting or some a, a relative? How did that come about? Uh, my dad gave me that name, and I think he'd read it in a poem, kind of Americanized it, um, calls me Pieta. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was curious because it's not like you know a normal quote unquote, but it's a very pretty name, certainly. And um, Thank you. you're you're welcome. And again, being on the road and making music and making records, how does that impact? Are you able to have a personal social life in uh, I? Uh, wait, is it Iowa or Idaho? I always get the eyes confused. Where Iowa, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's a uh, very important part of my life for me and uh, family and friends. So it's pretty much a priority, and so it's definitely a part of the picture, absolutely. And are you dating? Are you uh, uh, fiancé? I'm married, yeah. Oh, you're married? Mas yeah, a married woman. Congratulations. And I'm going to end it right there. i got I to run. Well, thank you so much, Pieta Brown. Good luck. Drive safely, and hope to get Thanks. you back on Long Island and to Colorado. Have a great, have a great weekend. Thanks a million. Bye-bye now.